all my truth seekers welcome to the truth show here we are with another royal family update i stopped talking about the royal family especially megan because the hate is unbearable and me being an individual bothered some people apparently especially in the comment sections oh she always does this i'm sorry who are you and what do i always do not be sheep have my own voice sorry sheep Go and follow your flock. I'll sit here on my horse and direct. <laughs> Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. You can see that look in my eye. Ain't gonna stop anytime soon. Run up while I cry. Here we go again. I mean, this is true. Oh, and there's more. Oh, I'm not. And there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. I mean, this is a truth show. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either end the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. As most of you know, Megan is now speaking her truth. Of course, the sheep and races disagreed. An individual like myself who agreed with her remain quiet most of the time. I know I'm late, but bear with me here. There's a point here. It seems that Megan has spoken up, and yes, many people confuse her with Camilla or Kate even, because they insist that she's an attention seeker and a gold digger. Let's explore this disparaging accusation and insult. Okay, a definition of a gold digger is, and I quote, a person who forms a relationship with another purely to extract money from them. Yes, this place is packed with a gold digger. Uh-huh, yes. Interesting. Let's dive deeper. Most gold diggers come into the relationships with bad credit and no prospects. All they want is money because in most cases they need it. Now let's look at Megan's stats versus Camilla's and Kate Middleton's. Megan came in with a promising career. She had her own house, I mean houses, money and celebrity friends. She was an activism and humanitarian, involved in many charities, cooking shows and various causes. Man Prince Harry was to be an addition to his celebrity status and hers. They were to become a power couple and was. As we all know, this did not happen. Well, it got halted anyway. The media butchered her and her identity was destroyed. Why? For various reasons. One being Prince Harry going out of his country to find a wife. Second, because she's half black. She was seen as a mixed woman, predominantly white, for most of her life. Here's what she said to this butcher of her character. I mean, I've, if there's any time in my life that it's been more focused on my race, it's only once I started dating my husband. Then I started Obviously. to understand what it was like to be treated like a black woman because up until then I had been treated like a mixed woman and things really shifted. Hmm. You've talked a lot about this, Don, <laughs> this concept. Yeah, well, look, there are a couple of things that work here. There's colorism, which I talk about. There's col colorism in the black community, but there's also, um, this is also for people, in, in some ways she was black or white, but she didn't get the full black treatment because people weren't sure that she was, you know, uh, black. I think most African-Americans probably looked at her and said, oh, I know that's a black woman, but uh, I think the larger culture may not have, have realized that. But what she essentially, what she is coming from is a pr place of privilege where she did not have to deal with racism until she married a white man and she's got- Meanwhile, Camilla, whose family is known to be gold diggers and prostitutes and Camilla drinking problem reputation is hidden because the royal family protects her. I mean, let's recap. Her stats are that she was married while sleeping with Prince Charles, who was also married. Her family has a career of using people, and that's a fact. She's never worked a day in her life. Well, if, never mind. And then we have Kate Middleton. 
who was practically raised with the agenda to marry Prince William or someone with some kind of money or status. She's never had a promising job or anything to add to Prince William. All she had was her family's name, whatever that is. Her reputation for being vile, picky, snooty, and racist stayed perfectly hidden. Oh, yes, because the streets talk and the blogs talk and staff talk and it goes all the way over here to the U.S., baby. Oh, yes. Yeah, but that stays hidden because the royal family protects her reputation, just like Camilla, but not Megan, who doesn't have this reputation. I wonder why. Heck, the haters even went far as to try and kill her son, Archie, while in Africa. Not to mention all the threats they've received over the past, gosh, since she got pregnant. They've received several threats. South African security has confirmed Meghan Markle's podcast revelation that there was a fire in her son's Archie's nursery during a tour of the country. Meghan talked about the previously unreported incident on her first episode of her Spotify podcast, Archie Types. When we went on our tour to South Africa, we landed with Archie. Archie was, what, four and a half months old? And the moment we landed, we had to drop him off at this housing unit that they had had us staying in. He was going to get ready to go down for his nap. We immediately went to an official engagement in this township called Nyanga. And there's this moment where I'm standing on a tree stump and I'm giving this speech to women and girls. And we finish the engagement. We get in the car and they say, there's been a fire at the residence. What? There's been a fire in the baby's room. What? God, I can't believe we even talked about this. No. And so we're in the car. We had just landed. We had just landed at what an hour or two hours before racing back. We get back. Our amazing nanny Lauren, who we'd had all the way until um, in Canada here, Lauren in floods of tears. She was supposed to put Archie down for his nap, and she just said, "You know what? Let me just go and get a snack downstairs." And she was, was Lauren's from Zimbabwe, and we loved that she would always tie him on her her back with a mud cloth and her instinct just like let me just bring him with me before I put him down in that amount of time that she went downstairs oh my God. Oh my the heater gosh. in the nursery caught on fire there was no smoke detector someone happened to just smell smoke down the hallway went in fire extinguished he was supposed to be sleeping in there and we came back hmm. and of course as a mother you go oh my god what is Are everyone's in tears everyone's shaken and what did we have to do? Mm. Go out and do another official engagement. I said, this doesn't make any sense. Can you just... Uh, how did you not bring him? I was like, can you just tell people what happened? And so much, I think, optically, the focus ends up being on how it looks instead of how it feels. Of course, this led to a backlash in that country, the UK. Of course, nothing new. And it led to a trending um, hashtag vote sake Megan or go away Megan trending after its release. I mean, are we surprised? No. But a source familiar with the event told Citizen newspaper that the fire had taken place at the official residence in Cape Town. Here is what happened from a source that was there. The heater burnt. The house didn't burn, thankfully. The rooms didn't burn. I didn't see the fire itself, but I saw the heater when it came out of the room. The plastic was severely melted, the source said. The source told the newspaper that British security traveling with a couple recommended they not make the incident public. And here's what was said. When we were outside, we discussed what we are going to do about this. It was a new heater that was just purchased. And... Uh, consensus was guys this is going to look bad for us or for Cape Town South Africa or for whoever the British police guys actually told us guys just leave it as is don't talk about this we we decided we are not going to expose this thing that's why we kept quiet about it back then because we knew we were going to get backlash Megan described the incident to tennis great Serena Williams on the premiere of the podcast and said that despite being shaken by it she had to carry on with her next royal engagement and of course as a mother everyone was in tears and everyone was shaken and what we have to do go out and do another official engagement and I said this doesn't make any sense she told her friend as you just heard in that um 
podcast. But guess what? The UK carried on a trendy trend of basically telling her to shut up and stop lying when everything she and Harry said thus far has been the truth. The royal family even confirmed it. But the press pushed out lies and twisted stories and, you know, making her as the villain and victim anything to make her look bad and make the royal family look like peaches and cream. Many people are saying she likes to play the victim. Hell, she is the damn victim, okay? Not playing when she is the victim, okay? What do you want her to do? Sit and just sit back and just take this crap? No, I wouldn't even do that. Would you do that? Well, I would like to end this by saying that you should pay close attention to anyone who speaks against and or the truth about the royal family. They have more to lose than gain for speaking out, okay? And stop believing the damn media about someone. Only trust their actions. Only trust their actions. What if you were in her shoes and you are this genuinely good humanitarian activism and nice kind person but the media is making you look like a bad person when you know you're not and your close friends know you're not but they're afraid to speak up because they're afraid to get backlash and they hate it too so the people who are on your side are forced to be quiet just so they won't fuel the fire how would you feel this was you would you sit back and just continue not saying anything or would you find some way to speak your own truth think about that Many of you should know Queen Elizabeth has died, which means Prince Charles is now King Charles III. It also means that there are mixed emotions. Some don't care and some people are heartbroken. But why? Watch this. The thing about the Queen Elizabeth, because kids are terrified of her, they see something in her that we can't see. Just see it by yourself. Now, what's more tragic, the queen dying or her loyalists thinking the world should be mourning with them too? And with all the people celebrating thinking Diana will get you justice when the queen makes it to heaven. A bit of an insult thinking she's going to make it to heaven after this list. <laughs> On a serious note. <laughs> On a serious note, do you know how many brave souls fought to gain independence from the monarch all over Asia and Africa? If it wasn't for the queen, we wouldn't have people like Nelson Mandela and Mahatma Gandhi. I guess we have something to thank her for. But if you didn't know, these countries are still under the subjugation of the monarch. And I live in Canada. I can't speak for the majority of these countries, but as a settler in Canada, I was quite surprised when I found out majority of Canadians support and believe we should become an independent republic from the monarch. As much as I would like to become an independent republic, as for now, Charles is the king of the countries that I listed. Let me leave you with some good news. The funeral day and the coronation day will be considered a national holiday. The Queen, her gold carriage alone is made of four tons of solid gold worth over $370 billion at today's gold prices. The Bank of England Nominees Limited was established to hide the Queen's investments. Secrecy about her wealth protects her. Government and banking officials inform the Queen about where to invest her wealth. That's called insider trading and it's illegal. But the Queen gets away with it scot-free. Why? 
because she's the queen and she's immune to prosecution. The queen owns more than 300 residences, including castles and palaces, crown jewels, over 27,000 masterpieces, prize racehorses, and a fleet of Bentleys and Rolls Royces. Her colossal wealth also includes crown land and investments that she inherited from her black nobility ancestors. The Queen's Crown estate includes over 50% of the UK's coastline, as well as Regent Street and Windsor Great Park. Her trillions in wealth are passed down to her descendants, untaxed. Would British tourism collapse if the monarchy was abolished? No, statistically. Buckingham Palace doesn't even make the top 20 list of tourist attractions. Do you know how much the Queen is worth? 17 trillion pounds. That's 30 trillion dollars. She could end world hunger and poverty tomorrow. Besides insider trading and tax-free income, the slave trade and drug trade. Queen Elizabeth I started the British slave trade in 1564. As head of the Church of England. Her slave trading of African blacks upset the moral foundations of the church. Queen Elizabeth II is now head of the Church of England. Two hundred years after the slave trade was abolished, the church was pressured into confessing its horrific crimes and apologizing for profiting from the African slave trade. At first, the queen and the church only admitted to owning slaves and plantations. But the public soon discovered that the church had given their blessing to something far worse. The church had approved the beating, mutilation, rape, kidnapping, and murder of tens of millions of Africans by declaring that Africans had no soul. This gave the church a divine license to profit from their diabolical crimes. Even more lucrative than Queen Elizabeth's slave trade was Queen Victoria's drug trade. Opium was grown and manufactured in the British-owned opium factories of British India. China banned the importation of opium, but once the British monarch secured a drug trade monopoly, over 17,000 illegal chests of opium worth millions were forced onto the Chinese population. The British waged three drug wars on China to force them to pay for the illegally imported opium. China's emperor didn't stand a chance against the British East India Company gunboats and Royal Navy. The British destroyed, plundered, looted, and raped their way along the coast of China until there was nothing left to loot or plunder. On August 29, 1842, the Treaty of Nanking forced the Chinese government to pay 15 million pounds to the British merchants to open up its ports to opium trade. And to cede Hong Kong to the British, this was the ugly origin of Hong Kong's 155 years as a stolen British Crown colony. There are people who believe that they have a God-given right to rule over others. They believe that their outward appearance is superior to all others. They harbor selfish ambitions to be rich. And to have power over what they describe as common people, they lie, cheat, steal, strangle, stab, and slash their way to power. They believe that their actual willpower, what the British occultist Alistair Crowley described as the will of Thelema, the royal will. Must be obeyed. Literally millions of people have been slaughtered at the behest of the royal lust for war, and thousands of people have been assassinated so that demonic dukes and killer queens can reign supreme. So you see, Queen Elizabeth. Was not the woman some of you think she is? <laughs> Put like this: when the racist riots were going on and so on and so forth, she did nothing. She did not comment, stop, nothing. She stayed firm to her beliefs and laws for a very long time. She kept things the same. Heck, didn't hire any black staff members until the seventies. And when it came to media scandals, she believed in the no comment approach. 
ignore the controversies, and they would just go away. She did that with the death of Princess Diana, the rumors of her husband and a Catholic children, rumors of plenty of infidelities from him, and the controversy surrounding Meghan Markle. Yes, which can lead many to speculate that she went along with the negative or just didn't care. She also didn't believe in much contact with the fans. If she did, she wore gloves most of the time. She also made Prince William and now King Charles do the same when she was alive. But as you can see, that all changed. King Charles couldn't wait to approach the fans. He hated not doing that. William and he did. They both did. She also disliked public PDA, which is another reason why Kate and William didn't do much PDA. Among other reasons, despite them sometimes wanting to, but they do now. <laughs> Take a look. saying that you should pay close attention to anyone who speaks against and or the truth about the royal family. They have more to lose than gain for speaking out. And stop believing the media. We don't know who's behind the butchering of Meghan Markle's reputation. I heard that Prince William was, but who knows. Well, that's it. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And don't forget to hit that bell to get notifications for when I do post more videos. Love you all. Bye-bye.